Welcome to tonight's stream. Holy cow, that is a fly right in front of my camera. I missed it. Got it. <laughs> um, so, nope, missed it. Come here, you. Ah. Super entertaining, me chasing a friggin' fruit fly. Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> welcome everyone to the stream. It's so nice to see you here. Um, today, of course, we are going to be hopefully finishing up the... Um, um, apothecary, ultramarine apothecary, at least as the, far as the painting part. Um, I am going to be putting on some um, decals and things like that on it just to get it looking right. Um, and then we're going to deploy it to my force. Uh, but after that, uh, hopefully we'll finish that up tonight. We should. But after that, I'm going to do something that I haven't done on the stream yet as far as painting goes. And that is I'm going to be painting a bust. I'm going to be painting this guy here. Um, I think it's going to be a, a cool little journey. I've done a, a few busts, um, uh, but I really want to kind of uh, jump back into this style of painting because it's completely different. You can get some really, really cool details on something like this that you can't. Some really good practice with blending and things like that. So that's uh, what's going to be next after we're done the apothecary. So hopefully coming up Monday, uh, this is the guy that we're going to be painting. Uh, but for now, without further ado, Let's go ahead and get ready um, to finish painting the old ultramarine apothecary here. So first thing that I want to do is I do kind of want to go ahead and start painting in some of the metallics. Um, and then along with that, I want to start doing some cleanup. Um, you'll remember last week that I tried to my best uh, to prevent um, from like getting any paint on any of the white bits. Was not successful in that. Um, because all of this is still in its primer and then I'm going to um, highlight the kind of gray primer with, with true white. The problem is it's primed with this right here, which is a great primer, but there's no color that actually matches this perfectly. So I'm gonna be actually be using the primer to touch, do, do my touch up. So what's going on Stormtrooper? How's your day been going, man? Um, but for now, we're gonna go ahead, starting with some metallics. So, we'll go ahead and start with some of this awesome uh, lead belcher, which is an amazing metallic, and we'll go ahead and start applying that. Um, like I mentioned last time, I did get some new brushes. We got some uh, Monument Pro Synthetics. Um, typically, you don't want to use it is not Friday yet, unfortunately. I wish it was. Um, but you typically don't want to use metallic paint with natural brushes because the mica powder that's in metallics tends to be rough on natural bristles versus synthetic. So we're gonna use synthetic. At least that's what I've been told. I haven't really tried using synthetic or uh, natural brushes with my metallics, mostly because I don't want to ruin my really, really, really nice and expensive brushes. But I'm really excited, number one, about getting this guy finished, but also getting him to the tabletop. I'm going to get a larger brush because I'm not really doing a ton. Um, because I'm always excited whenever I get to put a new unit on the, the war table with my 40k army. Mostly because I just enjoy playing 40k. Even though I am terrible at it. I think I've won a single game. And that single game that I won was basically I went to a local shop. Uh, our local One of our local games workshops. I, I, I think I've talked about it here. Our local games workshop store. Um, the guy who owns it does like 
um, what he calls lessons. So he does painting lessons. And if you're a new player who was wanting to learn how to play 40K, uh, they'll teach you how to play. And the way he did that is he got another player from uh, that normally shows up to a shop who he can trust. He has them um, um, basically fight you and your army, but at a reduced cost. So for instance, if I was running a thousand points, my opponent would run 900 points just to kind of keep it so where, you know, your first experience playing 40K isn't getting absolutely crushed by, you know, some meta army or something like that. That was the only game I've won so far. <laughs> but we're getting better and better. It's getting to the point now where I can play without being destroyed in the first couple rounds. Uh, as I'm kind of learning the game, learning how to use the Ultramarine kind of stratagems. Um, and then, of course, making sure my list is up to snuff. Which for me, that's the fun part, is figuring out what units and what stratagems are going to work well together. And then just throwing it out onto the battlefield and seeing if it works. Which probably isn't the best way to do it. I'm sure there are people who are much better at list building than I am. But putting units, like fighting, learning what units really kind of did the most work in your army, taking those and then adding other units that you think will go well with them and then take the best out of those units and how they work well together. And that whole process for me is just fun. Um, now to an extent, I do ask for other people's help, like you know, other people who play ultramarines or like whenever I finish a match, I'm always asking the person who I played, hey, how can I get better? What would you do to my list to make it you know, more playable, or I shouldn't say more playable, more winnable? Because the 40K is, is fun whether or not I win. At least to me it is. Because it's more about me hanging out with cool people than it is necessarily about winning. Although winning is a good feeling, obviously. But I, I, I'm pretty sure I would be what most like 40k tournament style people would call a filthy casual. <laughs> we'll say I'm really liking this br these brushes so far. So I haven't gotten, like, as far as my synthetic brushes, I've really only used either really, really cheap brushes or some brushes I got with this wet palette by Game Envy, which are the Phalanx, which are just terrible. I literally took them out of the package, and out of the package they were already hooked. Um, so for those of you who don't know what that means, a hooked tip is when the very tip of the brush is curling. Um, and it really hurts your ability to use the brush with any kind of accuracy. Um, and it happens with synthetic brushes the more you use them. You know, it's just something that will happen. So needless to say, when I take them out of the package, I expect them to be at least straight and usable, and these were not. Not the ones I'm using now, the, uh, the Phalanx brushes. I don't know if maybe I just got a bad batch, or if the quality control was really that bad, but... I was not impressed. So, so far, these monument brushes um, are at least better in that they're not completely unusable. Which is kind of part of the reason why I waited till today to start applying metallics, because I knew I was going to get these in the mail. And I really did not want to attempt to use those terrible brushes on stream. Like, and what, what's funny is like the the the, mon, the um, game envy brushes, they're these sable brushes. I use these all the time, and they're great. They're amazing. Man, those synthetic brushes were disappointing. I got them, and I was like, this is this is insane. I can't even use these. They're brand new. 
Um, I haven't checked any like forms or anything like that to see if that's a common experience. I'm, I'm hoping it's not. Because it was, uh, I got them as part of uh, my Kickstarter for the wet palette that I have now, which has also been amazing. So like every every other product that I've used from Game Envy has been just excellent. It's just those brushes were just terrible. So if you are a new painter and you're looking for a good set of brushes to begin with, I would not go with those. What I would go with is just go to your local hobby store, grab a set of round brushes, synthetic round brushes, just whatever's cheap. Um, you'll want to get sizes probably three, two, one, and maybe zero, and just start off with those. It'll probably cost you 10 bucks for the pack. Um, and from my experience, those will do just fine, especially if you're just starting out in the painting hobby and want to kind of see what it's all about. Okay. So next thing we'll want to do is start on with the metallics here on the gun. So we're gonna paint the barrel, kind of this stainless steel metallic color. Then there's like a little bit of like a, I'm not exactly sure what it is, maybe like a, uh, a guide rod or something just below that. Man, I'm really bad when it comes to my 40K lore, like weapons knowledge, like what exactly the parts of the weapons are. I need to get better at that this little skull here we'll paint that silver and there's a little bit of like buttons and knobs here that we'll go ahead and paint silver too just to give it a little bit of variety just to make it look visually interesting because again if you remember, this is a point that I always try to drive home on stream, and that is we don't want something to look necessarily realistic. We want something to look good. Part of that is creating texture, visual interest, and creating something that will draw somebody's eye to where you want it to be. Right, so for instance, we don't want to spend a ton of time on his gun if we want people's eye to be drawn to his face. We want to spend most of our time in the face. Okay. So, what do I want to do next? Let's go ahead and do this little side apparatus here. Well, I don't normally use washes on like my fantasy figures uh, or my display models. Specifically, I don't use uh, a lot of metallics or metallics washes um, on those models. On on my practical minis, the stuff that I use on tabletop, whether it be D and D, Warhammer Forty K. Those I definitely will because I'm not necessarily trying to make them look spectacular for display purposes. I'm just trying to make them look tabletop ready. And that's kind of the ideology I guess I have whenever it comes to, to that. Okay. So I think think so one of the one of the difficult parts about using metallic paint specifically is the coverage metallic paints typically do not cover as well as normal paint and so I will have to go back and do a second coat on pretty much everything to prevent it from looking really splotchy um, and inconsistent
How's it going, Calico? Good to see you here as always. Welcome to the stream. going well um, work's been I think I, I talked about this last time on stream we uh, we have some new hires and everything is going really really well with them um, it's making our lives and on uh, my team significantly easier which is you know good to an extent right um, because with when one thing becomes easier, we're faced with another challenge, right? Uh, at least on our team. And I think that's the same for a lot of people. If you hire somebody to do a job and that job is done, you can then move on to something else. Well, now you have a different set of responsibilities and a different set of challenges to face. So similar with me and, and what's going on with my job right now. So um, I'm being freed up to do other responsibilities that I've been neglecting because of other needs now that we've kind of got these new folks onboarded and working on their current position, I don't really have to worry about that anymore. And so time to face new challenges. How about yours? Where's my gold? Oh, yep, here we go. So for all my gold bits, I'm gonna use Liberator Gold which is a another Games Workshop tone here. Or metallic, I should say. Is, um, whenever I, I I don't think I've ever been injured at work but like for me whenever like either duties were light or there wasn't really anything for me to do I get bored super super easily um, when I'm at work so I've got to kind of like keep going so I, I totally feel you on the on the kind of boring part So it's funny, even um, like whenever I, <laughs> what's going on Cal? I would finish that song, but I'm kind of, my, my brain can't recall lyrics while I'm listening, of, of one song while I'm listening to another song. But welcome, as always. Good to see you. We are finishing up, or at least hopefully going to finish up, ye old Space Marine Poth carry today. And then next week, we're going to be doing a bust.
at least that's the plan and of course plans change so I'm gonna get to that get to uh, get to money and be like yeah I don't feel like it and do something completely different it would not be would not be anything unusual for me to do that gotcha It's interesting. So like, I kind of get the idea of a union. Um, and I think it's, va it's, it's definitely been valuable and it's helped a lot of people. Um, but there are places and things that unions have done, at least in the United States that have been questionable at best. Um, you know, on one hand it helps out the worker cause they can't get just fired for no apparent reason. Well, at the same time, for the employer, it's really hard to terminate somebody even, at le again, at least in the United States. It's hard to terminate somebody even if they deserve it. <laughs> nice. That's kind of gross, isn't it? Though, like if you're if you're gonna pick something up at the store, just buy it or don't pick it up at all. Like, don't be gross. But I feel like that's way too much to ask. Sometimes. Looking around, making sure I haven't missed anything, and sure enough, I have. Cool. Now, I did also get some new paint. So, along with the brushes from Monument, Monument makes these massive bottles of paint, which I say massive, if you compare it to Vallejo and then to my Citadel. Like they're huge and they, uh, I think these are three milliliter bottles where normally you get two or something like, that. oh, these are 22 milliliter bottles. Um, and then this is, where are you at? 17. So huge, uh, much, much more paint. And uh, I've heard good things about it and I've always wanted to try it. So why not? What's going on, Liam? Hope you've been having a good day, buddy. So far, I like it. It's behaving well, at least. Well, you know what? Let's go for broke and see what we can do with some irises on these eyes. You know what? I don't want to. I don't want to risk it. <laughs> I'd rather not have my entire like paint job be ruined on the face because I decided to add in some eyeballs where I didn't need them. General Kenobi! Sorry, had to. Cal made me do it. At least I'm gonna blame Cal for now. 
Uh oh, what's wrong? I mean, that'd be a good title it wouldn't happen so it'd be kind of false advertising Gotcha. So is it just that your headphones are like broken or is is just sound not coming out of your headphones? Like, I guess that's a, that sounds like a dumb question, but I guess it, it'd be more like, are your headphones working on something like your phone or like another computer or whatever and just not working on that, on that computer or is it the headphones are busted busted? Well, that's, that's not the, so it's okay if you don't use your phone, that's just a troubleshooting step to see whether or not it's like the port on your computer or if it's the headphones themselves. So if sound, if you plug the headphones into your phone and they work, then you know the problem is with your computer. But if you plug them into your phone and they don't work, then you know the problem is with your headphones. So it's just a way of narrowing down the exact issue. All right, we need a little bit of blue. So I'm going to use this new blue. It's called dark gray blue. Mostly because I haven't used it before and it looks cool. So I can attest to that as well, Calico. So both me and my brother, Stormtrooper, have actually used, or have used, used to work in a grocery store. Um, and it was a smaller grocery store, so it wasn't like a huge big box store. It was a just a grocery store, and that was kind of a local, not local, more regional store. Um, so I can attest to you always, you never take what's up front. Because at least for, for our stores, we rotated everything. So new milk comes in, the new milk goes to the back, old milk goes to the front, and then of course whatever's up front, people have already been touching on. love this blue color kind of a well it's exactly what it sounds like it's a dark gray blue it just looks super cool so we used to have um, and I, f I felt really sorry for them. We had a couple of older customers who came into the shop every so often. They came in about once every two weeks or so. They buy a gallon of milk, um, some and some eggs. And I think that's all they would buy. But I swear, you know, and this sounds mean, but they were probably in their 80s, 90s, like pretty pretty up there in age. But they you could tell when they came in because the entire place would just all of a sudden start stinking to the point where everyone had to hold their breath 
and when they got in line like it was so so insane um but i say that to say like yeah customers can be nasty like some of the stuff you see in like bathrooms at grocery stores whenever you go and clean them is just disgusting man <laughs> Like people are like, hey, this isn't my bathroom. I don't have to clean it, so I don't care anymore. And ironically, I've always found this at least, that the women's restroom was always 10 times worse than the men's restroom. I don't know why. I don't know if that's super common, but that's just what I found. Dude, I love this red. It's nice and bright and vibrant. Again, Monument Hobbies. It's a new paint line that I'm trying out. I bought a couple bottles of some colors I use a lot. Like I use a lot of dark blue. I use a lot of reds. So I got this bright red and then I got this burnt red. Um, I'm just trying it out. If I try it out, I'll probably end up buying like one of their starter packs or something or like their, you know, something like that just to Start filling out some of my uh, paint ranges. I'll tell you what, this paint too flows really nicely off the off the brush. So one of the one of the biggest things that I that I find frustrating about some paint is that it's nice and thinned, pre-thinned or whatever. But then whenever you actually touch brush to object. The paint stays on the brush instead of flowing onto the object you're trying to paint, which can be incredibly frustrating, right? But this so far flows really well. It's very effortless. The rest of their paint range is this consistent. Dude, I might, I might switch. I might make this permanent switch. <laughs> Cause I'm telling you guys, this is, this is some good paint so far. So let's go ahead and do a second coat on all of the gold metallic that I've put down. Um, not really. I think our characters are going to be different enough to where it's going to be obvious that I'm not trying to fill in for her I'm trying to bring something different um, so I mean if people want to judge me in light of SJ then you know okay she's a fantastic uh, role player so like big boots to fill if that's my goal but my goal isn't to necessarily fill her boots it's just to kind of I guess keep a seat warm until she gets back in my own kind of in my own kind of way So that's kind of way I, I feel about it. That's the, that's the way I feel about most things in life. Like I, I'm, there are certain things that I care about what people think. Like I care about what people think about, you know, whenever I'm playing live music, I care what people think about that. I care what people think about my painting, but there are other, a lot of things that I just could not give a rip about and my role playing is one of them because I'm going to role play the way that I want to. And if people don't like it, sorry. No, Tanner is not a cat person. <laughs> Actually, I don't think he's a dog person either. I think he just doesn't like animals because, um, 
and this will come out in hopefully this will come out in roleplay but he was raised in Barovia and there are some weird animals in Barovia so you don't just like animals in Barovia you kind of want to stay away just in case it's a freaking werewolf or were cat or whatever you want to call it I feel like I should, but I unfortunately don't, which is making me kind of annoyed at myself because I feel like I should know exactly what you're talking about. I do feel like I'm missing out now that you've mentioned something you uh, I was not uh, so a lot of the times I am painting while listening and if I'm I'm, I'm not generally in chat a ton um, as far as like chatting You know what the fun part about this model is going to be? The fun part about this model is going to be trying to do all the edge highlighting and recess shading. I may not, depending on <laughs> depending on things, because this th there's a lot here to do. All right, so I think I've gotten everything so far some really cool details on here so I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my primer here and because I don't actually have a color that will match this so I'm actually going to use the primer to do some of my cleanup I'm gonna use my synthetic brush for this just in case there's something weird with primer so I generally don't brush on primer, generally I use my airbrush. <laughs> I'll bet. Because yeah, in the, in the US I think the law is if you look under or over a certain age you don't have to be carded and so whenever you card like I always used to card the uh, older ladies in my line not because I cared about them being actually carded or th thought that they weren't old enough it's just like watching their face light up is like oh you're so sweet and then you take it away from them and say no I re but really though I need to card you <laughs> It's like the ultimate troll move. Try to uh, try to be like, oh no, you look young. Not really. I have to card everyone. Look, I knew a guy who uh, in high school nobody carded him ever. Um. I think for him it was more of like he knew everyone, but still. 
I knew plenty of guys in high school who never got carded or got mistaken for being older than they actually were. Alright, so I think he's looking really nice so far. Um, one of the difficult things that I'm going to have to kind of deal with soon is going to be how I want to deal with the recess shading. So recess shading for white is always a challenge because you don't know whether or not you want to use like a dark black color. If you want to use a lighter color or if you want to edge or do any highlighting at all or recess shading at all. <laughs> that that would be hilarious. And also, I wouldn't put that past calico to actually come up with a fake skincare routine. By routine, I mean routine. Because, you know, English words speaking stuff okay let's go ahead and do some washes for all my metallics so for my um, silver or for my gold I'm going to be using uh, Reichlin flesh shade for my silver I'll be using Agrax earth shade Um, I think the red in the Reichlin flesh really complements gold nicely and it kind of brings out the yellow in the gold. And then the Agrax Earth Shade does really, really nice with silver because it kind of gives it a more earthy feel. Um, gives it just a little bit of a brown tint, makes it look a little bit like it's oiled um, and cared for. There we go. I think that is looking super cool. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, first of all, Cal, I'm pretty sure everyone here would pay money to see that. Is it you, Calico? Is it you? Are you selling your VR headset? Okay. All right, cool. <laughs> oh, retros? He's selling a lot of his stuff, though, to be fair. He 
Dude, I will say though, I do have a VR headset, and VR is some, some of the best fun I've ever had. Especially with like uh, some of the Star Wars games. Oh my gosh, Vader, what is it called? Vader uh, Immortal is so much fun. Especially in the Saber Dojo where you can like fight up against um, like robots and droids that are wielding lightsabers and have like a lightsaber duel. Oh, it's so much fun, dude. I did not say younglings because it doesn't actually happen during any of the movies. It happens on Mustafar. At least that's where the story is. So there's three games. They're all $30. So it ends up being kind of expensive. Um, but it is such good fun. Um, Uh, but each episode is like a different chapter in the story and essentially you start as being captured by Vader and him trying to use you to find this hidden artifact and it just goes from there. That's kind of the premise I guess you could say. Um, and like there's a lightsaber dojo like I said where on the first one you just battle against remotes. On the second one, you get battle against people with our remotes and lightsaber. And then in the third one, you can actually use blaster rifles. You can use force powers and stuff like that. It's so good. And then as you progress in the uh, dojo, you actually unlock different lightsabers. So you can unlock Sidious's lightsaber, Vader's lightsaber, uh, Count Dooku's lightsaber. Uh, it's really, really a lot of fun. So what I'm doing here is uh, on the on the box art. There's kind of like this uh, on this little screen on his arm. There's this little transition between or from green to yellow. So I'm just painting that in. Kind of trying to do a little bit of a wet blend feather kind of paint job here, just to get a nice smooth transition. So the way that most VR games work is you use a controller stick, an analog stick to walk around and you, at least with my Oculus, you set up a boundary and the, it will alert you if you pass that boundary or you get close to it within a certain distance. Um, so you don't, I've never run into a wall. Um, if you set up your boundary like it tells you to do and all that kind of stuff, you won't ever have an issue. And uh, some games do have like a minimum boundary distance that you need to maintain or else it'll give you a warning. You can still play it without with basically ignoring that warning. But you know, as always, you're taking your own <laughs> possessions into risk at that point. I've hit this microphone a couple times playing Vader Unlimited because <laughs> I just reached out way too, way too far and, and smacked it. But I've never run into a wall.
dude, Beat Saber is is literally the goat. It is such a fun game. Trying a bit of a wet blend here just because my other method wasn't really working out very well and this is working so much better. There we go. Cool, 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 cool. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some of this bright red here to try to do a bit of an edge highlight on this cloth here because the cloth is a little bit too dull compared to the rest of the model so I do want to kind of brighten that up a, just a smudge like that We'll do the same thing on the chest here. Like so. Just bringing out a few more of those nice details. again right now it's just kind of blending in with the black straps that are hanging around his neck and I really want some of these details to pop a little bit more so are you talking about like the um, like the ones that you put your phone in I tried one of those a while back and it it was just the worst yeah um, I never really had a good experience with any of those all right so now the question becomes do I want to do a full recess shade on this or do I want to be strategic in the way that I do it? And I think I'm going to be a little bit more strategic. Um, so I'm going to do, oh, grab a couple of my paints here. I'm going to do um, some highlights on his pauldron, but I don't think I'm going to do a full edge highlighting on him. Um, because again, there's so much on this model that could go wrong. <laughs> and I really don't want anything to go wrong. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of a highlight on the inside of his pauldron between the trim and the main body of the blue here. And then that is going to be offset by the recess shade we'll put there in just a moment. Probably doesn't make a ton of sense as I describe it because I'm terrible at describing stuff like this, but it'll make sense in just a second. And then we'll go to our brightest highlight. And then this is just going to be in certain places. So usually with your brightest highlight, you want to stick to the parts of your model that are the closest to your light source. And with me, my light source is 
directly above him, so I'm just gonna do the very top of his pauldron here. Like that. Just refine it a little bit, because we do want it to taper off the further down it goes so that we don't have a thick line throughout the whole thing. I mean, at this point, I'm not even surprised, Calico. I'm pretty sure it's the law now that you have to put that emoji in at least once per stream. <laughs> it's the law. adding a thin line of this blue, uh, um, what is it called? Drakenhof Nightshade, which is like a, a blue wash. Just the inside of this pauldron here. And that's gonna give me a little bit of separation from that highlight that I just put in and the, uh, the trim. Hand is not being steady right now and I'm not appreciating it. Come on, stop shaking. It's only ever when I need to do super precision work does my hand decide, hey, now is a great time to start just uncontrollably shaking. <laughs> it's so frustrating. All right, even though I said I'm not going to do it, I'm going to go ahead and take some of my, some of my, uh, not my Agrax, what am I looking for? I'm looking for my Nuln Oil. I'm going to go ahead and start putting in some recessed shades across certain strategic areas, like his other pauldron here. If we highlighted one, we're going to want to highlight the other, or I said, sh I should say shade. Like so. It's just going to give me a nice line separation. Like that, just adds a little bit of a shadow there. Gives it this idea of being three dimensional, which it is, but it just kind of emphasizes that. Do the same on his knee pad here. On the inside of this little, I'm not sure exactly what you would call this. It's kind of like a flare on the top of his knee pad. like so. Again, we're just emphasizing all these tiny details. Yeah, I definitely said I wasn't going to do this, but now that I've started looking at it, it looks so much nicer with these highlights there, or these shades here. Um, so we'll just full send it. And any mistakes we have, we do have our color there to just kind of fix it. There we go. I'm also gonna do the same thing on the, some of these like cross hatching detail 
on his holster just so that we can see it a little bit better. One thing to keep in mind whenever you're doing anything like this, especially with something that's white, using a dark shade like Nuln Oil or a black shade or something like that is less is more. Sometimes when you're doing browns or you know, like doing a, a dark blue shade over a, a blue tone like I did with his pauldron, you can kind of get away with adding a bit more. But with white, white is not going to hide anything. So you got to be very, very careful when you do this. It's a mediocre emote. Similar to how pineapple on pineapple is not just a mediocre topping, but it is in fact an inferior topping. And I hope you realize Calico that even if I did enjoy the taste of the, the sweet, juicy pineapple on pizza, which I don't, I would still deny that pineapple on pizza is a valid topping just because I'm stubborn like that. <laughs> See, here's the ironic thing. I actually love pineapple. Just pineapple on pizza is terrible. In my humble opinion. I did forget to do something, so I'm gonna go back and correct that. What I forgot to do is put the metallic on the bottom of his little jetpack thing here. So we're just gonna go really quick and fix that. Can you imagine if I actually went to all this effort for all of my miniatures on, in my army? I think I mentioned last time I don't. I really only do this for characters, which technically an apothecary is, a, I believe it has the character keyword in it. Um, so I only do that for like my apothecaries, my tech marines, my lieutenant, or my captains, anything like that. But for like my regular rank and file, there's no way I'm spending this much time on a hundred freaking, you know, 20 intercessors, you know, 10 uh, incursors, and all of those guys. There's no way I'm spending that much time on each individual miniature. I'd be, I'd never play. I'd only paint. <laughs> Drop my brush. Again, it's not unusual for this stream, but hey. Dude, I can't wait to get my own emotes. Um, I can already tell you exactly what I'm, the first one I'm gonna get made is a pineapple with an X over it and then a pizza next to it. It's gonna be the first one. I'm just letting you know. The first custom emote I ever upload will be that.
Cool, 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 cool. Looking good, looking good. At least I think it is. All right, back to all of the wonderful recess shading. I will say this, while I don't spend as much effort as I am overall on all of my miniatures, I will say I do end up recess shading and line edge highlighting every single miniature I put onto the table. Because um, even if I don't spend a ton of time painting in like all the tiny details like I am with this guy, just adding that little bit of Highlighting and shading really, really makes them pop. Ironically, nobody at the table actually cares, but I do, so I do it. It's one of the cool things about um, the hobby of Warhammer 40k is there's the painting and the modeling side of the hobby and then there's the gaming side of the hobby. Both of them are so much fun and both of them kind of have like their cult following like some people can't stand the modeling side of the hobby but some people love it like me and some people can't stand the gaming side of the hobby but love the painting side for me I kind of like both of them Oof. a little too much there so we'll pull some out so one of the cool things about this uh, uh, the, the um, washes is so you take a damp brush and you just kind of tap on the area if you put too much uh, shade on your brush and it ends up overflowing it will literally just wick away it's so easy to correct mistakes using uh, a wash or shade which again I've, I've said it before it's liquid talent man it works so well it's almost as if you actually know what you're doing <laughs> That is when you're first starting out. Like it's really easy to take a shade after you've painted a model and just apply the shade all over. And it will literally make it look significantly better without much effort. It's when you get to the point where you're like, I want to start really making headway into miniature painting, that wash washes actually become a little bit more difficult, more tedious. You start doing things like I'm doing here where it's like I'm going into each of these crevices and I'm applying a wash to them. And it takes forever, but the end result looks so good. I'm curious though is there anyone like what are what is everybody's hobby in chats so like if you had to call yourself like if you had to identify with one hobby would it be gaming would it be you know uh, D&D would it be comic books like what would you identify as you as like a hobbyist like what is your biggest hobby
are looking good, y'all. All right, cool. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go through and start correcting some of this. And what I mean by correcting is there are places where uh, the line that the wash made is a little bit too thick. So I'm just gonna go in with my primer here and just move that line back just a little bit. Because again, the key here is we don't want it to look like a black line. We just want to make it look a little like a little bit of a shadow, just in that recess. As with everything, contrast is key. So the more contrast we have, the better it will look to your eyes. Not necessarily the better it look, it'll look, but um, contrast between light and dark makes for good shadows. Contrasting color makes for good and interesting paint jobs. The struggle is whether or not you make it look gaudy <laughs> when you do so. Because I swear I've made some gaudy looking miniatures by trying to trying to use contrast to make it look more interesting. So I'm going to take some of this Agrax Earth Shade again, and we're going to apply a wash to the uh, back of these little cones here. I'm not exactly sure what those are. I think they're just vents, because not it's not a jetpack. Because these aren't. This isn't a. Uh, uh, this isn't a, a you know a jetpack model. I have some of those. They don't look like this. I guess they're just vents. Not really sure. Like I said, I'm really bad about knowing what all the weapons and stuff in 40k are, which really comes down to kind of a <laughs> frustrating thing with me and some of my opponents, because a lot of the times you want your models to reflect what you have on your data sheets. So I'll be like, "Yeah, this guy's got, um, you know, um, a flamer." And he's like, "No, that's a that's a heavy melta rifle." Or like, "I want this guy to have, you know, a." Um, you know, a heavy bolter. It's like no, but that that's a, um, that, that's you know whatever else. Can't think of any of them right now. Um, I'm really bad about that. I need to get better at learning the weapons in 40k. What they actually look like, so that I know whatever weapon I'm actually putting on my miniature is the one I'll have on my data sheet. Also, why on my larger miniatures I've started doing what's called a magnet mod, uh, where you essentially, on larger weapons where you don't know what kind of weapon you want to use, you then drill out a hole on the shoulder or hand, depending on where it's mounted, and then on the weapon, um, and you install a magnet on both set uh, on both sides. Um, and that way you can put on and remove whatever weapon you're using on that particular miniature. I'm 
I'm just applying a yellow to the lens of this. Uh, light here. And then on the, there's two little lights below it on the box art. They have one is red and one is blue. So we'll start off the blue one with this dark gray blue and we'll work our way up so that the front of the lens is closer to white. Uh, that was the wrong one. This is the one that's supposed to be blue. Don't think it really matters, but. Actually, you know what? Let me use a darker red so that I can work my way up. So we'll go ahead and use this burnt red. I'm using my synthetic for regular paint. Definitely should be using my. Ooh, I like that color. It's very similar, like a similar in in uh, kind of. Uh, I guess you say like palette type to the gray blue. So it's kind of that same darker color. I like it a lot. And then we'll just work our way up from there. Again, until we're almost to white. Moving further and further forward. As far as the red go, we'll take some of this, add a little bit of the burnt red to kind of get an intermediate so we're not immediately jumping to this bright, bright red. And while those dry, I'm going to add a little bit more yellow to the lens just so we can get good coverage here. Because yellow is one of those colors that does not really do well with uh, coverage. So you often have to apply multiple coats, especially if you're applying it over something darker or something metallic. Which in this case, we are doing both. So we're kind of screwed. <laughs> Okay, we'll go ahead and go to our next shade of blue. And our next shade of red, which will be just this plain bright red here. And then we'll mix it in with our white, which we'll try using titanium white. Excuse me, bold titanium white. Nice. Sounds, again, one of the reasons why I don't do cats. Cats are kind of jerks. Jeez, this white is bright, holy cow. I knew titanium white, like quote unquote titanium white was bright, but my goodness, dude. say one thing I'm really liking about this Monument Hobby paint is the pigments man it is so heavily pigmented and I'm here for it so often I get I get new paints in and like they're just poorly pigmented and so you don't get good coverage um, but this is like everything that I'm seeing with this paint so far has been absolutely fantastic it's been well pigmented it's from what I would consider to be layer ready uh, meaning that it is already pre-thinned and ready to start layering with. Uh, it flows off the brush really, really nicely.
and it's well pigmented so it gives good coverage. So I'm really, really enjoying this paint. I've had I've heard really good things about it, but I really didn't <laughs> to be honest, I didn't believe them until I actually started trying it. Man, so far. Okay, so like um just like and I forgive my <laughs> this is probably gonna sound super weird, but like normal puzzles or like like you know, like you pick up a puzzle at Walmart or whatever, or are you talking about like some of the really cool like 3D puzzles or like uh, some of the like the alternate um, alternate alternative puzzles where they're like different shapes instead of the traditional jigsaw or are you more of a more of a traditional girl Gotcha. All right, so next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is start in with the base. Um, so a lot of the rubble around the ultramarine down here is gray. So we'll go ahead and take some of our London gray and we'll start base coating everything. We'll go in with a dry brush once everything's base coated and ready to go. I, I haven't really been too terribly into puzzles. Um, I don't have anything like quote unquote against puzzles or whatever. It's just never really like, um, when I was younger, I just ha had no patience for it. I know my brother did some puzzles when he was a kid. Um, but like for me, ADHD kind of kept me from actually enjoying it. Probably to, to the extent that a lot of people do. Um, yeah. Nice. How many pieces was the puzzle or was that one of the 3D puzzles? See, that's how much I don't know about uh, puzzles like I don't do you still do like piece count on a 3d model or is it just 3d makes it that much harder nice that sounds pretty cool if you want go ahead and drop a drop a pick of those in uh, uh, in my Discord, I'd love to see it. Ah, um, that's unfortunate. Cause that sounds super, super cool. How long did it take you to do? And I guess another question too is I know some people will actually glue and frame their puzzles. Are you uh, like a, do you do that as well? Or are you more of just, you'll, you'll, I don't know, build them or finish them or however you would call that. Um, or do you like, and then glue them and frame them? Or do you just have like a couple puzzles that you do over and over and over again? And then once they're done, you just rip them apart and then start over. Okay.
Gotcha. Yeah, I know uh, when my brother did puzzles, he, um, he, I think he glued one. Um, I think it was, I can't remember what it was. I think it was a Titanic puzzle. Um, I think it was like a, it was a rather large one. It might've been like one of the like big 20,000 piece puzzles. I don't remember. It's been well over a decade. <laughs> No, more than a decade, because this is when we were, like, mm, still, like, elementary school. So that would have been probably 20 years. Jeez, it's been that long. <laughs> Getting old, y'all. I'm old, yet still a child. That's the awesome thing about being, uh, <laughs> yeah, awesome. We got a couple bullet casings down here that we're gonna use some of this weapon bronze on. Gotcha. I don't know, like I said, it's been at least 20 years since he did it. So I have no idea if it was, you know, a thousand and I just thought it was bigger than it was. Gen genuinely just don't know. All right, so one of the things I'm gonna have to do here, because I don't want to go into as much detail on the Space Marine who's laying down as I did with everything else. Uh, Cause he's dead, he doesn't matter anymore. Uh, at least to the Imperium of Man. They just want his gene seed so that they can make new Space Marines. Um, so he doesn't matter anymore. He's just a shell. Uh, but I'm going to kind of strategically put different colors of shade on him. So like around this bullet hole in his shoulder, we'll add some Nuln oil just to get a little bit more of a blackness around it. Um, we've already added Nuln Oil to, uh, or not Nuln Oil, um, Reichlin Flesh to some, of, to some of it. So we'll go ahead and wash the rocks with Agrax. To give it some depth. And then we'll wash the rest of the Space Marine in the um, in the blue color that I'm, or the blue shad shade that I'm using. Gotcha. What did you used to read? Is it more like fantasy or is it more like uh, uh, sci-fi, romance, mystery? Like what were you into? So, and just to kind of let you know, like I used to be big into reading as well. Um, and for me, what happened is I just, it got to the point where nothing interested me to the point where I could sit down and read it without being distracted. Um, So uh, for me, audiobooks help with that. Um, so I don't know if that would help you, but for me, audiobooks really help with my reading. So far, I have, let me check my Audible account because it is quite, um, quite robust, I'd say, as far as like the amount of time I've spent listening to audiobooks. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Listening, listening time is what I want. 
total time. So when I say this, this isn't I've spent this much time in Audible. It's literally from minute one of the first audiobook to what I've listened to now. If I listen to them straight through, I it would take me one month, 25 days, 10 hours, and 45 minutes. Um, my listening level is quote unquote master. So that just means that um, I've listened to anything from young adult fiction all the way to literal like academic books. So for me, audiobooks have been a godsend in, in getting back into reading. Gotcha. Is it just that it, you know, audiobooks as a like books as a whole don't interest you anymore? Is it more like you just can't get into anything as far as like the subject matter? I've never, so what kind of, what kind of, uh, book is that? I don't think I've ever heard of it. Hmm. Is it that you get bored or is it that like um, it just doesn't interest you anymore? We are so close to being finished with this guy, and I am really excited. Because this is going to be one of those projects that I've spent a lot of time on compared to uh, other Space Marines. Again, because he's a character. I'm going to take some gold. I do want to go ahead and make sure that his trim on his pauldron lets everyone know that he is part of the first um, first legion or was part of the first legion <laughs> gotcha yeah that's what it was like with me when I when I kind of stopped actually reading physical books um, Again, I don't know why physical books just all of a sudden stopped appealing to me. Again, audiobooks have kind of helped me um, with that, but yeah, I, I feel you. Um, but for me, it's it's fantasy. So I'm I'm really into fantasy. I used to do sci-fi as well, um, but for me right now, fantasy is where it's at, um, and really anything in the fantasy genre too. Interesting. So is it because he got married or it just can't like it just, and also is it like um, just like a, a story is it more biographical like
right, so I think he is just about done. There's a few touch-ups I'm gonna have to make here and there on the base once the, uh, the shade dries. Like I wanna make sure that the, the gold on this is nice and opaque. Then I do, oh, I did forget about that. So there was a bit that I forgot about here. And that was the actual gene seed that he's got in his hand. I wanted to put a little bit of pink on the top to make it look more fleshy. Just keep a little bit of the red there and just kind of highlight up to pink. There we go. Super simple. All right, well folks, I do believe we are done this mini. Uh, like I said, I'll go back and um, gotcha. Interesting. So I will go ahead and post pictures of this once I have applied the uh, matte varnish to it. So right now it's very shiny. Part of that is because of the wash I applied in certain areas. Um, I'll also go ahead and apply the uh, the, sh the shoulder markings. Um, so the Ultramarine logo will be on his shoulder pauldron there and then he'll have a blue one on his knee here. Once I do that, I will go ahead and post pictures of him. But for now, I think he's done. Um, for those of you who weren't here at the beginning, the very next miniature that we're going to start on Monday uh, is going to be this bust here. Uh, he's a big fella made by uh, Loot Studios, who is, uh, for those of you who have been here for a while, know that they're probably my favorite um, producer of um, 3D files for 3D printing. This is one of their busts for one of their earlier uh, uh, packages. They do like monthly packages. Uh, so he's going to be my next project. I think he's going to look super awesome. Um, and yeah. Um, I'm super stoked about it. Um, interesting. So, so urban fantasy more like, um, how would you put it? Well, the Dresden files, right? That's, that's Harry Dredson, Dredson, Dresden, right? If I remember correctly, I don't know. Iron Druid Chronicles. That actually sounds like fun. I'll have to check it out. So right now I'm listening to, and it's going to sound super dorky, but it's it's such a good book. Um, it's this right here. It's called Legends and Lattes. So it's literally about um, a, an adventurer who, um, who stopped adventuring, kind of retired because she was getting old. And she, uh, coffee doesn't really exist in the way that it does here. It was essentially a drink that the gnomish people invented. And she brings it back to a city and starts her own like little coffee shop. And it's, yeah, it's a really, really good book. Um, I'm, how far am I into it? I am on chapter 15. So I've got only a couple chapters left. Um, there's 29 chapters, so I'm about halfway through. I love it so far, it's so good. <laughs> Gotcha. So it's, yeah, I'll have to check those out. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll have to wait until I build up some more credits because uh, I just bought the um, the Legends and Lattes and I'm working my way through the Wax and Wayne series for Mistborn. Um, I read the first trilogy year, uh, you know, months and months ago. Actually, years now. It's probably been two years since I read it. And so I'm working my way through that. Um, and then, but so... I'll, ha I'll, I'll, since I have this in, in chat, I'll just come back and reference it when I'm, when I'm editing this down for stuff. But yeah, um, I, I do love high fantasy. So kind of fantasy in modern times would be a, would be a fun, fun thing too. So, um, well, normally I do go for, I try to go for around two and a half to three hours, but we did finish this guy a little bit early. 
Um, so uh, there, I think there are a few things I could do here. Yeah, you know what? Let's do it. I'm gonna grab my texture palette here. And we're just going to apply a little bit of a dry brushing of some lighter grays. Thanks for the follow, man. I appreciate it. If you'd like, I also have a Discord. Links below. Um, bunch of nerds there. D&D lovers. Um, and Calico. <laughs> I have not. Made a little bit of an error here. But that's okay. Stuff happens. <clears throat> we'll work our way up to our nice sky gray here, which is a nice bright gray. Welcome back, Liam. You've been uh, lurking. do here because for whatever reason my dry brush decided that it wanted to paint the recesses as well as all the high points so I'm gonna really quick take my non oil here just do a quick stay open quick recess shade some of these deeper bits here just to bring out some more of this definition oh that's not working why aren't you working Let's try a smaller brush. There we go. Gotcha. Yeah, absolutely, dude. So I'm I'm not terribly new anymore, but like I will say, at least I try to be. Um, and and a lot of people who I've interacted with are as well in the painting hobby. Uh, very very helpful. Um, so I mean, like I'm definitely not perfect. I'm definitely not to the place where I want to be as a painter yet. But dude, if you have your, your work where you want some, some help or some input or whatever, dude, I'm, I'm here for it. Um, but yeah, Space Wolves are sick, man. I love Space Wolves. Um, I, my favorite co color is blue, so Ultramarines for me were, was the, the way to go. Um, but I'm probably going to go away from Ultramarines once Horse Heresy gets released. I'm going to go with uh, uh, a different faction for my horse heresy uh, folks. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, horse heresy is a new, um, not really a new game, but kind of is a new game that Games Workshop is releasing. Uh, basically, horse heresy was an event in 40K history um, where one of the Primarchs rebelled against the Emperor. Um, and it resulted in the, uh, the Imperium of, of Man being s essentially split and the Emperor dying. Um, which also ironically resulted in the Emperor becoming deified, which is something that the Emperor didn't want to happen. But... <laughs> Not a problem, man. Um, for me... Painting is one of those hobbies that you're never too old for. <laughs> you're, 
talking about this guy here. It's not cauliflower, it's fire. <laughs> and he's not a, he's, he's not a Navi, he's a tiefling. What are you talking about? He looks awesome. <laughs> That's definitely fire. <laughs> anyway. Well, I think I'm gonna call this done. Ooh, what in the world? I think I rubbed off a bit of paint on the top of this little thing here. So I'm just gonna correct that really quick, Lack. There we go. So, um, I'm gonna call it there for tonight. Um, I'll be back on on Monday, of course, as always, nine o'clock Eastern, uh, painting a much larger miniature. <laughs> um, which I'm super excited about. It's been a while since I've done a bust like this. Um, so it's gonna be a great opportunity to pull out some new techniques that I've learned since the last time I did one and see uh, what I can do on uh, this kind of scale. So um, I look forward to seeing all of y'all then. Um, thank you all for all the new folks who've stopped by. Um, and uh, yeah, super excited. As always, um, you guys are awesome. And I'm so thankful for y'all showing up every every uh, every session so um until next time i hope all of y'all have a wonderful week and i'll see you next time